Today I wanted to share with you how to hold a client meeting so that you can feel confident and professional every time that you meet with your clients, no matter uh, at what stage of the project. The reason why I think this is such an important topic is because a lot of um, uh, designers who are just starting out really feel insecure about what it is that they need to say at a meeting or they stop themselves from going in the first place because uh, they're, they're so afraid that things aren't going to or that they're going to look silly, they're going to say the wrong thing or that they're not experienced enough to actually um, undertake the meeting. But once I think um, you see how easy it can be or that you can follow a step-by-step -step process, it means that you feel confident and you can show up um, always looking professional and knowing exactly what it is that you need to say. So before your meeting, you would want to set the aim or the goal of the meeting. And that could be, is it a consultation? Is it a design meeting? Is it a, is it a design team meeting? Or is it um, a meeting that's designed to get feedback on your designs from your client? Is it a presentation? So there are so many different reasons you would have a meeting with a client or potentially even a contractor or a builder um, throughout every stage of a project. The next thing you need to do before your meeting is to create an agenda for the meeting. This is critical because it outlines all of the steps that you would be talking um, to your clients about on the day. It also means that you're starting to get prepared and starting to think about all of the things that you would need to prepare for the day. So um, work out, all you have to do is just list out the things that you think you need to talk about on the day and then just arrange them in an order that makes sense. And once again, before your meeting, you would make sure that you prepare all of your documentation for the meeting. Of course, that makes sense and you're probably already doing that. But um, if you're having a face to face meeting, make sure everything's printed. Make sure that you have all of the documentation that is required. Do you have scale rulers if you're going to be um, on site? Do you have um, if you're going to be holding a virtual meeting, you would prepare the same thing. Make sure that all of your documentation and the formats are correct for uh, the way that you're going to be presenting. Um, especially if you are emailing things uh, that make sure that you know the file sizes and the resolutions are good and that everything is uh, looking quite um, as it should and how you expect it to. Something I specifically do is I pack my bag and I prepare all of my clothes the day before my meeting. This means that I, on the day, don't have to faff about trying to figure out what I have to wear or um, if something isn't clean at the last minute or you know if um, I just know that uh, I can get everything uh, organized and that I am just feeling calm and collected on the day that I, I don't have to think about anything else. Which leads me to the final thing you would do the day before is try to get a good night's sleep. So if everything is organized you know that you're ready uh, there's nothing better than um, being able to um, go uh, to sleep the night before and actually get a decent night's sleep. If this is your first meeting, you will probably be a little bit nervous anyway. So you don't want to um, highlight that by um, not getting, you know, uh, or aggravate that by getting a, um, uh, a hard or a difficult night's sleep. Especially nobody wants to see a wired designer show up at their house if it's uh, you know a residential project so you want to be as professional and as calm as you can possibly be and i think um, making sure you get a good night's sleep is a really important part of that so on the day so your first step would be to make sure that you've uh, looked at how to get there and make sure that you arrive five minutes early typically I say you don't want to arrive too early because you don't want to be knocking on the door and they're not prepared because they're not going to be and um, you obviously don't want to arrive late so I always say five minutes beforehand is a really good goal because that gives you a little bit of time to find yourself and obviously if things don't go according to plan you have a little bit of leeway. Step two is something that I personally do and I just call it having a Zen moment because um, I just uh, try to make myself present in the moment. It just gives me a little chance before my meeting to calm down because I'm always feeling nervous before any meeting and, um, you know, maybe things didn't go according to plan. Maybe you had to run for the 
bus or the train or something was late or you had an argument with somebody or you know something just didn't happen in the way that you expected it to that morning it just gives you a moment to just take a deep breath and you know realign say that you've got this I know where I am what I've got to do today I'm prepared and I'm now being paid to give my time and my attention to this person so the next step is to introduce yourself I always say have something prepared Um, and I think this is really important because a lot of people get caught off guard especially at the beginning of their careers when somebody says oh how long have you been a designer and they'll say oh 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 oh," and they won't want to tell them that they haven't done this before or that this is their first meeting so have something prepared and just say oh well um I've been, uh, I've, this is uh, one of my first meetings, but um, I've been actually doing this for a long time. Or if you don't want to say that, you can say, well, actually, um, I've been doing this and this. And, you know, just come prepared with something so that you're not, um, you know, so something that you can tell people about yourself that isn't going to make you feel awkward or them feel awkward. So it's just, you know, something to break the ice with. The next step is to take control and suggest that you start the meeting on time. And this is really important because I think this gives everybody the, um, you know, attention on you and also in a positive way, um, make sure that um, you gain the respect that you deserve if you're the person running the meeting. The next step is to guide the meeting and follow your agenda as best as you can. So obviously not everything always happens as you plan, but if you've got the agenda to always fall back on, you always can kind of keep um, note of where you are. And obviously if you tick off where you, uh, what you've covered, it means that you can cover everything that you need to. And the aim of your meeting um, goes as according to plan, even if it is, you know, a little bit to the left or to the right of where you had wanted to be. The next step is the most important, and that is to take notes during your meeting. At the beginning of my uh, business, I used to record all of my meetings so that I could refer back to um, what was said, especially if I was nervous during the meeting. But um, however you do it, make sure you at least take notes, whether that's, you know, an assistant taking notes for you or you're taking notes. I prefer to take my own notes and um, I also always like to have you know, a notebook with me and a pen. I think I just feel secure with my notebook. And, um, you know, whether you're writing notes on the plans or on the drawings, that's OK as long as you have something that keeps a record of what you spoke about at the meeting. The next step is one that I really struggled with personally, and that is to wrap up the meeting. (laughs) I often stayed for lunch, stayed for dinner. Uh, My clients can never get rid of me. (laughs) We obviously always became very good friends, but um, try and wrap up the meeting. Try and find a way for yourself to wrap up the meeting um, professionally and you know, concisely, kind of quickly. I would leave five minutes or so to have a conversation if I needed to ask uh, ask your clients or anyone else at the meeting if they have any other questions and try and uh, wrap up. The way I um, typically did it was just saying that I have everything I need now. So um, uh, if you have any other questions, um, that's it. The next step is to write up your meeting minutes or notes. they're obviously in the industry called uh, meeting minutes or minutes of the meeting and um, I call them meeting notes if uh, it's more of a residential or an informal kind of um, project. If it's commercial or contractual I'll always um, call them meeting minutes and um, make sure that uh, it's done professionally. So writing up these minutes is um, typically uh, a part of the contract so it's really important that um, the way that they're written is uh, professional but it also provides you a step-by-step process of what it is that you need to do and anyone who was at the meeting what steps that they need to action from that meeting to the next step is to email everybody who was in attendance of the meeting the minutes of your meeting so uh, you can see once again how important this is if it is a contractual matter or if it is um, when you're at the construction stage of the project uh, you might uh, uh, want to not do this (laughs) because you know it's admin but the thing is is you have to do it and you have to do it ASAP after your meeting so leave time on the day of your meeting to write up your minutes as quickly as you can don't 
overthink it, just try and quickly get the main points out and send it to everybody who was at the meeting as quickly as possible. And the final step is my favorite because it is what keeps you looking professional. And what you can do now is follow your uh, your uh, meeting minutes and you have a step-by-step process of what it is that you have to action and do next after your meeting so that you're never sitting there thinking, oh, well, I don't know what to do now. You always know what to do because you've got all of the points right there for yourself. So hopefully you can see how important it is to have a system for yourself. Hopefully this step-by-step system uh, that I've prepared for you is something that you can refine and just you know personalize and make Uh, work for your business the thing is at the beginning it's better to have a process to follow than not and so this at least is a good example for you of how I've run meetings my whole career and um, how we we used to run uh, meetings uh, in all the offices that I um, I I've worked also if you want an example of how to do, uh, how to write an agenda or how to write meeting minutes, uh, we always have a blog post associated with a video. So go to our website, click the link below and have a look at um, uh, the templates for you. They're free for you to download. And uh, that just gives you an example and everything that you would need to uh, do this professionally and um, make sure that you feel confident the next time you hold your meeting. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Joe Crowback. I'm an architectural and interior designer, and I'm also the founder of the Interior Designers Business School, where we run a mentorship program um, that helps uh, interior designers and architects start their own business professionally and as quickly as possible.